Yes, that's right. Joe Biden is officially in it. To win it? Well, I don't know. The president announced his 2024 re-election bid this week, not with a big speech or a rally or a press conference, but rather with a social media video. Have a look. Freedom. Personal freedom is fundamental to who we are as Americans. There's nothing more important, nothing more sacred. That's been the work of my first term, to fight for our democracy. This shouldn't be a red revolution. To protect our rights, to make sure that everyone in this country is treated equally and that everyone is given a fair shot at making it. Stirring stuff. Did he steal that guitar riff off Paul Murray? Anyway, let's take, let's be frank. Slick campaign videos aside, Joe Biden does not appear to be up to the job of being president now, much less running for president in the future. Indeed, he often seems even more dazed and confused than even his vice president when she's giggling about school buses. <laughs> yes, look, he can manage public appearances for a limited amount of time and take questions from the press so long as he has cheat sheets. But beyond that, well, Axios, which when it comes to political leanings is hardly the MAGA media, reported this week that White House officials are privately conceding that, quote, it's difficult to schedule public or private events with the president in the morning, in the evening, or on weekends. Don't know what that leaves left, but anyway, according to their analysis, the vast majority of Biden's public events happen on weekdays between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., unquote. Now, they did a breakdown of these events and found that since the start of the year, Joe Biden has done only four public events before 10 a.m., just a dozen after 6 p.m., mostly dinners and receptions with foreign leaders or fundraisers, and 12 full weekends with no public events at all. Now, the American public, not unkindly, but also not incorrectly, thinks that Joe Biden is, as befits a man of 80, winding down. And they know, they should know, that a vote for Biden is likely also a vote for a future Vice President Kamala Harris if the president finds himself unable to complete his term. This is something that even CNN's Van Jones admitted the other day. She is in such an unusual position. She's a woman, she's black, she's Asian, and she's running alongside the oldest person to ever do it. So she's essentially running for president. That's what she's doing. And not even White House spokesman Karine Jean-Pierre is claiming that Biden could really get through another four years. Does the yeah. president um, plan to serve all eight years? <laughs> I'm not, I'm just not going to get ahead of the president. That's something for him to decide. I'm just not going to get ahead of it. And we're, there's a 2024 uh, campaign. Anything related to that, I would refer you to that. But there is an even more immediate problem for Biden, because running for president, especially when you are already president, is an incredibly taxing gig. Now, unless we just happen to get really unlucky and score another pandemic out of nowhere, hey, stranger things have happened, Joe Biden won't be able to campaign from his basement again. And this is where this all really hurts Biden. All politics, you know this is essentially a retail game. Remember, in 2016, when Trump was running against Hillary Clinton, one of the reasons why I thought early on he was a real chance to win when so many others dismissed him was he spent his entire time flying from place to place, getting it in front of as many voters as he could. An NBC analysis at the time found that Trump out-campaigned Hillary by 50% in key battleground states. And you know what? That's hard work. Biden wasn't up to it last time, but he had COVID as an excuse to stay at home. And he will not have that excuse this time. Advantage, Trump.